Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glad that so many people showed up at this hour of the time. Um, I think it's my healthiest death days. I was never so early in bed like this year. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to show you in this uh, presentation is all around CDA, what you can do with FIRE, how does you can use the FIRE tool stack for working with CDA. Um, does anybody know what CDA is in this room? Mm -hmm. Or does somebody not know what CDA is? Wow, wow. <laughs> So um, we will look at the logical model of CDA. We will show you um, how you can convert that model with the uh, FIRE validator. I will show you how you can apply FIRE pass expressions to a CDA document, show you a quick introduction to the FIRE mapping language, how you can map from CDA to FIRE and possibly back, and could try to show you where we could go in the future using the FIRE publishing stack for CDA. So all this step we can do afterwards in the Let's Build session, if you stay for another hour or another part. Um, who don't know me, I founded Artis five years ago. We are only two people, so the whole company with Michaela together, we are here at Dev Days. Um, we do teaching, consulting around HL7 and IHE standards. So uh, we have a huge project in Switzerland, um, converting CDI to FIRE and PAC, so that's also why I tried to bring you that knowledge here, our experience with it, and um, background is informatics. So I can skip that slide very fast, I guess, if you know all, that's the uh, HL7 development of the standards, so CDA in 2005. Um, this is an example how we use it in Switzerland, or could use it, we have made a base profile, you have, we have it for medication, for example, um, try to structure this data. Um, so we are here at the Fire Dev conference. In Europe, we have actually quite a few CDI projects still. I think the famous is Austria, which have it in production, production, using it heavily, medication lab results. We have Denmark here, which have a lot of projects. We have Italy, which has published projects, Switzerland with different projects, and even on the European level and many more. You can also look this in the last uh, newsletter. So even so, we have a lot of fire development. There is still some sci um, CDI projects going on. And that brings to the point how you implement CDI projects today. Uh, back in 2005, the only thing you had more or less was a schema, a XSD schema. A lot of the tooling at that time had problems working with the schema. The schema was so complex that uh, it failed for serialization. So it was not easy. Today's programming stack is better, except probably you work with JavaScript. So I don't know how you would do CDI with JavaScript. Um, in Europe, we have a tool, Arch Decor, which is heavily used for modeling all this inform <coughs> these projects, but there is no or at least I'm not aware of any tooling where you can export that modeling information and use it for your programming implementation. There is another project, uh, MDHD, Model Driven Health Tools, which goes more in that direction. But so, especially in Switzerland, we had to use the Art Deco model, and then we remodeled the stuff in MDHD to use it, so that was a bit complicated and gave many errors. MDHD is still living. The latest release is a bit old, but there is a small community around it. So we have an open source project, eHealth Connector, um, which was first based on MDHD, and now they change directly to CDI schema and our decor te template, trying to do that bridge directly. So I'm not 100% sure if that's the right approach, because I think what we have with FIRE, I think we could also use the FIRE technology and infrastructure to go with C implementing CDA. So and why is that? I think it's an incredible community we have here. There are a lot of people. You find stuff. You have a modern IT standard. It's everything free. If you Google something, even in CDA, you end up on the FIRE website, not on a <coughs> CDA website. We have test servers uh, available. We have a 
very good validation tooling around and not just in one stack. We have it available in different stacks. So that's why I'm very good interested how we could apply that knowledge um, also to CDA. Who of you has already worked with a logical model in FIRE? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so a logical model is a way you can define arbitrary structures, content within the FIRE infrastructure. So that can be CDI models, that can be any other stuff. Um, and you can afterwards then use the existing patterns which we use also in FIRE. So, and there is a CDI model for CDI. Um, it's, I think it was originally done for CCDI, the consolidated CDI version in the US. It was presented by Graham at the Dev Days in 2016, if I remember it correctly. And it lives now on GitHub. And you see it's Alexander and Sin who continued working on it. And um, this base model allows you to work with CDI on fire. Um, there is no official release yet. It's still worked on, but um, at least for today's exercises, everything is prepared that you can show what this can go to. Um, V3 has a lot, so the base of CDA have a lot of data types. So you see, for example, CD, contact descriptor, which displays a code. And this is now modeled in the, or uh, Graham extracted it fr from the C CDA definition, and this is now modeled. And what you see here is the visualization of this logical model in this implementation guide. So you have the CD concepts descriptor type, which has a code, a code system, and all the values you know from V3, and it's derived from the any, any data type. And then the next one, the coded equivalent data type, is the differential here, uh, differential here, and what you see, this is derived from the con concept descriptor type and has no qualifier. So when you then look at the snapshot, what this gives together, you see that the qualifier here, which is here below here, gets removed from the differential. So this is a complete description of the CDI model. You have also all the CDI classes, like a clinical document, like an act, Autikenter described here. So I hope it's not too small, but gives you the idea. We have a clinical document, then we have a class code, MUT code, and all the different elements from CDI down to here. CDI is not a very easy description to describe the format, so we have a few special things. You have attributes. In Fire, you just have the value attribute to define an element. You have type attributes, different elements. Show you quickly how this is represented in a logical model. So, for example, for the telecom, where we have a use attribute and a value attribute, this is defined in an element definition that it has a different representation. So you have here representation value XML attribute, and that shows you with use that this one here is defined as this. Then you have a XML speciality that you can define what type uh, element is, is defined in the document itself. So you have this XSC type construct. So effective time can be uh, one of these different compl uh, complex timing stamps. And at runtime, or at runtime when you parse it, you only know which of this element is then inside. And this can also be described that you have here this representation type attribute. Then in CDI, you have uh, 
the values also in between the elements, between the tags. So this is also special. So we have a representation that uh, you have a XML text. And then when you are, you have also narratives. So in each section, we have a narrative, and this is not HTML, so this is a special CDI markup language, which is very cl close to um, HTML, and this is currently described here that we have a section text, and it's coded XHTML. And this is a bit, at the moment, um, in the representation is CDI text, the code is XHTML, and there needs to be done some conversion. So this is something special, because this markup language needs to be converted to XHTML if, if you want to. And the validator inside has this functionality. Maybe in the future this could also be extracted and described with a logical model. And then we know. I like it so much how you did it in the Java validator, so that's fine with me. <laughs> so where, we, where it gets a little bit complicated is um, CDI has an ID element, and ID has another meaning in fire, and the, all the logical model elements are currently based on an element, and the element has an ID attribute and extension elements. And the uh, ID uh, uh, of CDI is playing now a little bit havoc because here it's the other way around. So we have an ID element instead of an attribute and the uh, ID extension as an attribute instead here of an element. So this is a bit an ongoing discussion. It's also on Sulip, it's not completely decided yet if there needs to be a change, how the logical model is defined, if there is an element. So I think what I did now for this um, presentation, I followed the advice that we will uh, a base, uh, define a base element, and that's why for the presentation afterwards I made a special fork, because this is not a, um, in the release yet where this base element is introduced. So. That was the theoretical part. What we can we do with that now? So you can validate now CDI documents. The Fire Validator, this is the Java version. Does everybody know the Java Fire Validator? So you can download it from the HL7 website. There is a link to it, and it's also in Zulip. It's mentioned every time a new release is coming up. That's a jar file you can execute. You specify the version. You can specify an implementation guide, and what we can do here is now we spe specify the implementation guide of the Fire CDI model, and then it takes this resource, validates it, and gives errors or warning back, or if everything is okay, then it's fine. Um, there are two samples. There still are some issues a little bit in the model around validating value sets, and here you see also a speciality with uh, dates. A uh, few CDI documents don't have a timestamp, for example, that um, this one gives now concurrently warnings or errors. Then what we also can do now is we can convert the CDI document to the JSON representation. So you see then also how this logical model looks like. So I, paste, I, I take the XML version and convert this CDI document to the uh, representation of JSON. So we have here, and you see here now also how this works. So we have the section code title as uh, CDI XML, and here you would have the equivalent JSON representation. And you see here also that this markup text list item is converted automatically to the XHTML uh, version. What we can do also with CDI document is now to apply FirePass on it. So FirePass is 
uh, extraction language somehow like XFAS? You have a comment? <laughs> so what you can do now is uh, you can ask also like an XFAS question, you can do a FirePass question on this document. For example, if I want to get to know what is the given name of this uh, patient and can use record target patient role patient name given and this returns me then the name of the patient because here it's inside I have to use data string so if you are more interested what you can do with firepass I think there is a session this afternoon specific about firepass also not in this context but what you can do now is also um, you can use this JSON uh, conversion of the XML, put it in a FirePass demo of Nikolai and Paul, and you can dynamically evaluate all the stuff. Or you can do the other way around. A colleague of mine uh, developed a VS Code extension, and this is also using uh, Paul's library, and you can directly execute FirePass expression inside the VS Code. And this makes it very fast if you have to define an implementation guide and you want to test if your FirePass expression is working. There are some complications in the uh, compatibility, but it's quite nice. So, this is what you can do just with CDI document. But the other thing is what we also would like to do is extract this information from CDI and bring it into the fire world so to, to map the data. Um, because we have also fire documents, which Rene presented earlier. Are you familiar with fire documents? Good. And there are a bit of challenges between mapping between CDI and fire. Martin did here. I think a very good overview when you have a clinical model, what is difference between the standards. But I think for a at least a few use cases, it's, it's a good way to extract data and bring it over to the FHIR world. So FHIR documents um, is equivalent to CDI in most part, except the fine part Rene presented. We have a composition resource, which uh, is equivalent to the meta information like a header. We have also narrative. These documents can be signed, authenticated. So it's more or less approximately the same as a CDI document. And we have the different levels of CDI. So you have a level of one when you just have metada metadata and text. So, so text. So you can map this to a bundle with the composition inside. You have a second level when you have coded section which you can map and then you have a level three where you have structured entries which then would even map to entries in the bundle. Um, so you can do a part of it or a lot of it automatic, generic, but then um, uh, the closer or the more structured the data that it gets it's getting more difficult because you, you can't know all from the information just from the model what would be the representation in FHIR. So I think, or at least the deeper you go, you have to go back then to convert it on a template by template basis and not can just use the general model definition. There are different mapping projects running, or I'm aware of there was a CCDI on fire project in the US. There they started with a project where they did some also some XSLT based mapping. Um, then is the CCDI mapping, which uh, has general maps for the base standard, which is also a CCDI project you find here. And these are, but this can be also used for CDI documents, so I, this is a very small difference. So Graham already presented uh, the fire mapping language. Uh, so this is a concept where you can convert a, a direct acyclic graph to another direct acyclic 
a direct acyclic graph. So um, this doesn't need to be a formal declaration. So you can, sorry, you don't need formal declaration, but you have just different trees which you try to convert to each other. So this is an example. You have a clinical document bundle. You take the clinical document as a source and you take the bundle as a target. And then you say the ID element in the source. For, for this one, please make this the target identifier in the bundle. So we can convert one information for the other and then you can go in the tree so that when you make afterwards a composition and take the stuff out of the CDI header down to the bundle. Yes? You just mentioned that the syntax has changed slightly since, but all the concepts are the same. So the syntax of how the source is a little bit different now. Is this, yeah. but it still works? Uh, maybe not the old syntax. Okay. <laughs> So we try it afterwards. Uh, did you already try, Alexander, if the maps are working? So there are different fire mapping language implementation. There is a Java one. Firely just announced this week the .NET, .NET Monk one. Um, I could use some of the first maps. I didn't run yet the CDI map, so uh, something up for later. Um, so for the uh, but anyhow, if there would be a different in the text rep representation, you could use them for a structure map and then re-export them to the different syntax. I don't think that's a huge issue. Um, so this is then an example. You have this mapping, you have different elements defined, and then what you can do now, uh, you can now take that XML CDI data, you specify the maps which you want to use for this transformation, and then you get out a, f a fire bundle composition with the elements inside. So this is the result here from the sample document. You have then a bundle, you have an identifier type composition. You have it now not in a CDI JSON or a CDI version, but in a fire representation. The current mapping goes down that it takes the header metadata, translates it, translates the section and the text entries. It doesn't go down to the, to the entry levels yet. So, and that's the point now um, where this could go further. We could do mappings then afterwards. You can take a mapping like it's defined for medication or a lab report or whatever, and then, then define then specific mapping based on the information you have inside. So still a lot of work. What comes here to help is that HL7 has defined <coughs> um, template standards, how CDA templates or possibly others could be expressed in a, in a structured way. So you see here that you have a clinical document which includes uh, different types, so uh, structured information. And what you could do now is take this structured information and Arch Decor, this one tooling setup, can export you the structure definition and then you could map this to, uh, can, no, sorry, our tech can export the templates and then you can map this to structure definitions afterwards. So this is a transformation and then in the end you could use the IG publisher which is the publishing tooling stack to generate a new logical model based on the CDI model we have defined. So this is now how this looks like for our Swiss CDI project. We have a CDA document with a structured body. This is the description how it is in our decor. And what you can do now is you can export it and convert this to a structure definition, a logical model. And what you see now, you have the same information represented 
in a logical model in CDA or based on the think model. So you have the like you have the realm code here, which is fixed to CIG for Switzerland. You have it afterwards in this representation also here. You have a clinical document which the realm code is fixed to Switzerland. Yes? A question. In your experience, uh, you're working only with Azure Core or sometimes you have to put the ends manually to the XML? Um, currently, I'm working only with Art Core, and uh, I hope we get that far, but uh, um, at the moment you would need to add uh, manual stuff to it. But the goal would be to that you can ex export everything. But you get a bit complications, especially if you have then schematron rules and other stuff which is not easily to translate. Yeah, yeah so schematrons is... Uh, it's a bit a uh, pain. So, what I wanted to present you is this fire logical model for CDA. How you can validate and convert CDA documents with the fire validator. So you have a method available just to check if there is a document correct or not, and even uh, only for our Swiss samples, which are generated with our decor and validated there, uh, we can found a few issues where we saw, oh, there is something even wrong, which you could model wrongly in our decor, which is not conforming to the base standard, um, and showed you how you could apply fire pass expression to CDA documents, if you want to just evaluate, extract some information one by one, and how you could use the mapping language to transform part of a CDI document to fire and possibly also back. And the future maybe, I don't know how this develops, is uh, um, that you could also use the infrastructure um, from the IG publisher or uh, and build CDI implementation guides out, out of it. So this is also um, not only our decor is working on that, it's also Trifolia are working on that, that you in future can model CDI documents based on the uh, logical model. They are trying to bring that support also in our decor. Um, what would be then nice also is that we could include examples directly in an uh, implementation guide, CDI examples, that they were also automatically validated during the whole process. There needs still be to be some work done, so this is a little bit experimental. Maybe you see also a few things in the build session. Uh, let's build session if you stay, but it starts to work, and I think it's a great experience how you can use Fire with CDI. So, I'm a bit early, so we have plenty of time for questions. If you have any, Graham. Uh, we had some of this in the past 
third one will be able to support PDA documents and CISO inquiries and what they're doing with document info. I don't think that's really happening. Yeah. Although I can find out the online access to this. But it's a pretty interesting topic. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Which, yeah. do you, which do you think is the most promising approach to be converting to a level three PDA document? Uh, deployment of this for this review of the best option. I think this is just handwork on a template basis. So you have uh, like all, if you define a specific template for your use case you have and you then just have to define what the equivalent fire representation is. Yeah. And then like, yeah. what method would you use to convert this? I, I would try the mapping language. So it needs some time, but you can <coughs> express it. And I see the support growing. Now you have the mapping language. Yesterday, Brian showed some JavaScript uh, start of the mapping language. Uh, it, it always depends on the use case a little bit. If you just e need to extract some information, may maybe that's overkill. But if you have, uh, if it's up, yeah. If you have really complex documents you want to convert, I think, or at least we try it now in in Switzerland with this approach that you have a CDI document and you exchange it to the equivalent. But this is on a document and template format, and at now it looks promising. But I'm not sure in every case. You have any experience, Graham, on your side, H how well it works for entries on templates? So if there are no more further questions, uh, thank you for attending. There is some Swiss chocolate left from the chocolate sick, so please, <laughs> if you like to, uh, grab yourself a sweet treat for all the CDI stuff and enjoy the rest of the dev days. Thank you.